Welcome back to the basic thermodynamics video lecture series. In this video, I am going to discuss about Carnot theorem and I will discuss thermodynamic scale of temperature. In the last video, we have seen the concept of second law of thermodynamics. After establishment of second law of thermodynamics, there is an important theorem came out that is Carnot theorem. What it says, working between two same temperature limits, no engine can be more efficient than a reversible one. Which means, if you try to construct an engine, then reversible one will be more efficient. Right? So, how we can prove it? How we can prove this Carnot theorem? In order to prove it, let R and I be the reversible and irreversible engine. Okay? And these two engines are operating in a same temperature limit. So, we have two reservoirs, hot and cold having temperature T1 and T2 respectively. Okay, There is an irreversible engine which is extracting Q amount of heat from the hot reservoir and delivering W1 amount of work done and it is rejecting Q minus W1 amount of heat to the cold reservoir. A reversible engine is operating in same temperatures and this reversible engine extracting Q minus W2 amount of heat from the cold reservoir and we are applying a work W2 on this reversible engine in order to deliver Q amount of heat to the hot reservoir. Okay. Now, let's assume the efficiency of irreversible one is greater than that of reversible one. Okay. What it means? It means that W1 should be greater than W2. Okay. But according to Carnot theorem, efficiency of reversible engine should be greater. So, whatever we have assumed, we have to prove that this is wrong. Okay. If you look at this picture, if you combine these two engines, I and R, then it will constitute a self-acting device which is extracting W1 minus W2 amount of heat from the cold reservoir and delivering W1 minus W2 amount of work. And there is no heat rejection. This engine, this combined engine C is clearly violating Clausius statement, right? That means this combined engine violating second law of thermodynamics, therefore whatever we have assumed is wrong. Thus what we can say, efficiency of irreversible engine should not be greater than that of reversible engine. Hence we can say that efficiency of reversible one is more. Okay. Now move on to the second topic, thermodynamic scale, which is also known as Kelvin scale of temperature. What we know from the our lecture from heat engine that efficiency of reversible engine is independent of nature of working substance and is only function of two temperatures between which this engine works. Right? This we know from our one of the previous lectures. Okay. So, what we can say that eta r, which is efficiency of reversible engine, this is also we know eta r is equals to 1 minus q2 upon q1. This relation I have already derived, right? Here, q1 and q2 heat absorbed and rejected respectively. Let's suppose this engine working between two temperatures, theta1 and theta2. Therefore, as I said that efficiency is just a function of two temperature therefore we can say eta r is a function of theta 1 and theta 2. If you rearrange these terms then we can simply write q1 upon q2 is equals to 1 upon 1 minus eta r that is equals to 1 upon 1 minus function of theta 1 and theta 2. This whole right hand side can be again written as some other function of theta 1 and theta 2. Right? Now assume instead of one engine, we have two such engines. First engine takes Q1 amount of heat at theta1 and rejects Q2 amount of heat at theta2. While second engine takes the rejected heat Q2 at theta2 and rejects Q3 at theta3. Okay. Under such scenario, what we can write Q1 upon Q2 is equals to function of theta1 and theta2 and q2 upon q3 is function of theta2 and theta3. Okay. Now visualize the combined situation. 
when we combine these two engines so in that case we will have combined engine which let's say is the third engine which takes q1 amount of heat at theta 1 and rejects q3 amount of heat at theta 3 thus similarly we can write q1 upon q3 is equals to f theta 1 theta 3 but it's quite obvious that q1 upon q3 is equals to q1 upon q2 multiplied by q2 upon q3 substitute the functional form then we can simply write function of theta 1 and theta 3 is equals to function of theta 1 theta 2 multiplied by function of theta 2 and theta 3 okay in order to find out what is this function we just need to take a log and then differentiate with respect to theta 1 and theta 3 if you take a log on the both side then once you will differentiate with theta 3 then first term will goes to 0 and then once you will differentiate with theta 1 then second term will goes to 0 as a result we will find this relation okay and now what we will going to do we will going to integrate this relation with respect to theta 1 and theta 3 and once you will integrate you will find out log function of theta 1 theta 3 is equal to some other function of theta 1 plus some other function of theta 3 these function f1 and f3 are arbitrary functions okay then rearrange the log you will have function theta 1 and theta 3 is equal to e to the power f1 theta 1 e to the power f3 theta 3 okay now exponential power of function can be rewritten as some other function xi and phi so xi theta 1 and phi theta 3 this is the final form okay simplified more simplified form in similar way i can simply write for function of theta 1 theta 2 for function of theta 2 theta 3 right and we know this relation so just substitute just substitute the terms phi and xi here substitute here and simplify it what you will find out that phi of theta 2 is equals to 1 upon psi of theta 2 okay similarly you will find out that phi theta 1 is equals to 1 upon psi theta 1 phi theta 3 is equals to 1 upon psi theta 3 okay thus by using this relation what we can say function of theta 1 theta 2 is equals to psi theta 1 phi theta 2 which is equals to psi theta 1 upon psi theta 2 similarly we can write for all the functions now this psi theta 1 upon psi theta 2 is independent of nature and state of working substance so therefore it can have many functional form which justify this ratio but calvin argue that this psi if you multiply with a then we can simply define a scale tau tau is equals to a psi theta 1 okay and a is arbitrary constant this is as per Calvin that is why this scale is also known as Calvin scale so once we will utilize this we can simply write that q1 upon q2 is equals to we know function of theta 1 and theta 2 and function of theta 1 and theta 2 is psi theta 1 upon psi theta 2 and that is nothing but tau 1 upon tau 2 and what is this here we have scale the heat with respect to some scale tau which we are calling a new scale new thermodynamic scale or kelvin scale because kelvin has discovered it that is why we know there are three units of temperature celsius fahrenheit and kelvin okay this tau is not same as theta okay this is also we know and tau equals to zero signify the absolute zero temperature tau equals to negative value is not possible because once tau will be negative then efficiency of reversible engine will be negative which is not possible right so tau equals to zero signify the absolute zero temperature and this is the new scale of temperature which is called thermodynamics or Kelvin scale so hope these explanations are clear to you see you in the next lecture with another topic on the second law of thermodynamics See you. Thank you.